Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Friday, June 4th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The Minnesota game is in 90 days, the game against Michigan in 176 days. One year ago today, on June 4th, 2020, we posted the first ever episode of the Morning Scoop. It was terrible. Please don't go back and listen to it. Uh, that was the day that BuckeyeScoop.com launched. I had on Bill Green and Mark Givler to discuss the new site, the new team, just how stupid you have to be to launch an entirely new venture in the middle of a global pandemic. And now one year and 263 episodes of The Morning Scoop later, I wanted to bring Bill and Mark back on to talk about the first year and some of the exciting stuff we've got coming in year two. So, Mark, uh, let's start with you. You can be honest. This is a safe space. How many times after the Big Ten canceled its season last summer did you like sit at home rubbing your temples and going like, what, what did I do? Yeah, um, it was, you know, it was tense over the summer, but the interesting thing about it was our numbers were always so good. I think people were, um, in a way, uh, we might have almost been more necessary uh, during that time. I think people were looking for whether it was an outlet to get away, a little distraction from what was going on or, or, you know, more specifically, what the heck's going on with the Big Ten in the football season and you know, obviously, then the parents started, you know, uh, challenging the, the Big Ten on this. And, um, you know, it, I think it ended up, I think we made the most out of it. I think that's, you know, at the end of the day, I think we turned something that was, you know, really negative for a lot of people. And we were eventually able to to kind of, you know, give them that outlet of distraction and, and provide them some insight into a very positive outcome in terms of the Big Ten uh, re- revisiting their cancellation. Yeah, you, you look back at that and it just it feels so strange to think that they really legitimately were not going to play a season. I and mean, you go back and it's like, yeah, they won the Sugar Bowl and they play for the national championship like that. That season like was not happening at one point. And, you know, I mean, there were a few times recently that I thought like it, it can't have actually been a year already. Right. Like this is it doesn't seem like that long. But the day we launched, you go back and it's like. The, that was a Thursday. The following Monday, the Big Ten was going to allow st- players to start coming back to campus to work out in very small groups for the first time since everything shut down in March, which, man, that seems like a lot longer than a year ago now. So, you know, Bill, after that, there were a lot of ups and downs with the Buckeyes, the Big Ten after that, like r- run people through just I mean, I don't think people have necessarily thought about it, but just kind of run people through like what that was like for us on the site. Nevada's kind of like breaking information about, you know, hey, here's what I'm hearing with Big Ten. I mean, just run people through just some of that craziness that we lived through that last year. Yeah, it was, you know, I, I think Mark hit the nail on the head. I mean, I, I think it was, it was our shining moment. I mean, I think we really showed people what, who we are and what we could do, you know? I mean, we, we'd always work uh, competitors against each other for the most part. I did work with Nevada before, worked with Kirk a little bit, had no clue who you and Tony were from Men on the Moon. You know, I'd worked with Alex, worked against Alex, you know, and we'd always talked about, you know, coming together and forming a site and it would be great and we'd all be happy. Well, then we saw it and it happened. And the best thing was that it it happened under the most trying circumstances you could ever have. So and, and that allowed Nevada Buck to show who he is. OK, when everybody, you know, you might think, oh, that guy doesn't have it anymore. He's older. No, he still got it. You know, and he was able to shine then more than, you know, Mark or I or, or anyone else. That was really Nevada's time to shine. And the stuff he was breaking and bringing out, you know, two days before everybody else. I think it showed people what Buckeye Scoop could do, you know, from an information standpoint. And then even though there's a pandemic going on. Um, whether you play a game or you don't play a game, recruiting is still going on, you know, and, and it made it more challenging for Mark, for Alex, for Mick, for myself. Well, I think we did a good job. You know what I mean? And, and I think that the, the talent comes to the top, you know, and we, we've got a great staff here. And I think in trying times, I think that comes through maybe a little more than when everything is easy and good, when anyone can look good then. So I, I, I think maybe it helped us, you know, to start when we did in the most trying times ever. You know, we're not stupid. We know the statistics on the success rate of new businesses in their first year. Well, we're in year two. We're stronger than we could ever could have imagined we would be. You know, when this was a, you know, like a, a twinkle in Mark's eye or Kirk's eye, you know, it was fun in games then. But when you have people leaving jobs to come the Buckeye scoop. This is how people pay their bills, how they feed their families. It, it, it's not fun and games anymore. It's re- very serious stuff. And I think 
you know, I was proud to work with everybody because I think everybody felt that way. You know, it wasn't like everyone was in it for themselves. It was like Tom Moore gave up a job to come here. Alex Gleitman, you know, gave up something to come here. You know, Kirk and Mark put their butts on the line for this. So I think we all kind of felt that sense of teamwork, you know, and, and, and we'd envisioned it being this way. But a lot of times what you draw up on the blackboard, it doesn't go that way on the football field. So I, I'm just thrilled the way everything worked out. And, and as I look back, I think having a global pandemic, the most trying circumstances you could have, I think was the best thing for us. I really do. Yeah, you, you go back to some of those those shows last fall, morning scoops, stuff on the board. I mean, some of the stuff Nevada was reporting, it was like, this doesn't, this sounds crazy. This can't possibly be right. And it's like, lo and behold, he's right. Yeah. And you yeah. know, there were there were a lot of people throwing stuff out there on Twitter. And uh, he was he was very consistently right, right on an awful lot of it. And you could tell, like, mm, I, th- I think this guy does in fact know what he's talking about. So that right. uh, I think I think people figured that out last fall for sure. Mark, what was the biggest surprise for you since we launched? You know, this could be something good or bad, just, you know, something you weren't expecting in that first year that that uh, came to pass or didn't come to pass. I, I honestly, I think it was the response to the cancellation, um, both in terms of how the the parents responded and, and guys like Justin Fields and driving this and getting it turned around. Um, and, and, with that, just how the the fans um, looked kind of to sites like ours uh, for information, it again, I would have expected like, oh, no football, we could be in trouble here. But people were logging on, looking for something to talk about, looking for information. And that was a big surprise to me, um, you know, from a personal standpoint, just learning the, the tech side of this business and the all the other things uh, that that's been a roller coaster, but um, we're super happy with where we're positioned now. And um, you know, like I've I've said on the board, and I've told you guys privately, I, I think I've learned more in the last you know twelve to fifteen months about you know off the site business, you know tech technology, all that other stuff um, about this business than I did uh, the first twelve years I was in this business. So um, it's been a big learning experience. So just learning to kind of roll with the punches and you know, ride the roller coaster up and down a little bit and kind of, you know, keeping an even keel about it when, you know, something goes wrong, you know, on a tech standpoint or whatever, and just, you know, learning how to deal with that. So that's been a, that's been a wild ride for me, but it's been, it's been a much more uh, stable, uh, you know, past three, four five months now. And, you know, I feel like we're just now really hitting our stride. I think we did a lot of trial and error and stuff the first 12 months. And I think we're really now hitting our stride. Do you guys have a favorite event that we've been a part of or a story that we've broken since the launch or a favorite day on, you know, on the Ask the Insiders board? Like, was there some, you know, something that just jumps out to you as like the, your favorite day from year one? For me, Tom, I, I've got to say, like, you guys probably won't be able to relate to this, but we opened up June 4th, you know, 2020. And we opened up, it, it was a late afternoon, if you guys remember. It might have even been into the evening, maybe 4.35 o'clock, I'm guessing. And we opened up with me doing one of my chats, you know. And, you know, we basically threw the doors open like they would at a new Walmart. And you see who comes in. And so I couldn't follow numbers like you guys were able to follow. Oh, we got a couple more signups. We got more sign sign up, sign ups. I just was sitting there doing the chat and I thought, this is crazy. I mean, because it was so busy. And when you throw up your doors, I don't know, maybe we get three people to sign up the first day or something. And I'm talking to a couple dudes. Well, it was, it was crazy. It was insane with activity. And you don't get activity without signups. So in my mind, I was thinking, we got to be doing good because this year seems like it's crazy. And I didn't, have to, I didn't even know about, and, and after about an hour, maybe two hours, I think I texted Mark, like, how are the signups? How are we doing? And he's like, we're at this number. And I was like, oh my God, we're at that number already. Wow. I thought that would take a week. It took, you know, 45 minutes. And then my chat continued till midnight that night. And every, you know, maybe like two hours later, I would ask Mark, where are we at now? And he'd say, well, now we're at this. And it's like, oh, my God, that's, you know, within four or five hours, we were at like 
60% of what we needed to keep the doors open. You know, and by the time the night ended, we were at a number, and everybody had their own thought on this. We were at a number after the first evening that I thought would take a month to get to, and a number that I would have been thrilled to be at you know, at the end of June. So that was my best moment because I put my head on the pillow that night knowing that Tom Moore, Tony Gerdman, Mark Gibbler, Kirk Barton, Nevada Bud, Alex Gleitman, Nick Walker, I knew everybody's going to be fine. We're going to make it. You know, if we end the day on June 4th with four signups, we got a problem at that point, you know, and, and we can laugh about it now, but we wouldn't have been laughing about it then. So that was my best moment was the first four, five, six hours on the site when, you know, we ended the night and it was time to go to bed. It was like, we're going to make it. We are absolutely going to make it. So that was my best, best day. I remember that first day that there was, we, we weren't, we weren't supposed to launch until four or five in the afternoon, like you said, and at two o'clock or something, they just like put something up real briefly just to test something for like three minutes. And all of a sudden we had like a dozen people sign up and it was like, <laughs> are, are people just sitting there just refreshing, the, just constantly waiting to sign up? And it was just like, boom, like you could, you could tell it was like, oh, okay. People are excited for this. Like, okay, good, good. We're not the only ones. That's, that's a positive sign. What about you, Mark? Did you have a uh, favorite trip or a favorite memory from year one? Yeah. And I, I do have to talk about that first evening too. That, uh, that would obviously, that'd be on my short list as well. Um, just um, having, you know, talking to tech people and being like uh why are we getting signups they're like oh we had to open things up for 10 minutes to test some stuff we had it has to be live and there were i mean it was it was a significant number it was dozens it was like a bunch of people had like stormed the gate and like got through and it felt like we were like under siege almost <laughs> where it's like no wait we we're not ready we we told you it was gonna you know five o'clock or whatever it's you know it's three o'clock what what are you guys doing and so people like getting in and so that was hilarious to me uh and it made me feel good about you know well if that's happening and we've told people we're not open yet and they're still storming through what's gonna happen you know when we say, Hey, we're actually open. And I eventually just put on Twitter, like, Oh, screw it. You know, just go in. We're <laughs> fine. Go ahead. You know, and you know, the avalanche happened, but you know, I look at the, to the big 10 um, protest, um, you know, I, going up there was just kind of surreal. It was, it was like a, almost like a post-apocalyptic setting. There was like nobody out uh, this beautiful, like complex in Chicago was empty as all these hotels and bars and restaurants. And everything else was like a ghost town, except for these parents that showed up. And you know, Tony and I uh, were up there covering, and and it just um, you know people were mocking them uh, on on social media. And I'm not just talking about you know fans or you know trolls. I'm like legitimate national you know legitimate national media was mocking these people and just making fun of them and calling you know calling them idiots. This is all for nothing, and you know you know make you know accusing them of making it about them and not their kids and just so much you know all, like hatred it just felt like uh was being aimed at these people and you know i was there with them and it was it was nothing like that they legitimately were doing this for their kids and look what happened it worked and i'm sure there's a lot of freezing cold takes out there that you can find of people mocking the, these parents uh for what they were doing and and you know it, it's really funny you know thankfully they they did what they did because because we got a football season and Ohio State had one of the best seasons in school history, in recent history, anyway. Yeah, that was that was another another big day. I remember talking to you guys the night before, and it was like, yeah, I mean, this could be this could be twenty people, this could be five hundred people, and it was you know it was fifty or sixty people, and they carried it live, and you know we didn't know if it was going to go all day or it was going to go an hour, and it went a couple hours, something like that, and you left, and it was like, I don't know, I don't know what you know, I don't know if that changed anything, I don't know, but then they had a protest at Ohio Stadium a week or so after that, and. On and on, and lo and behold, they played a season. That was uh, that was a pretty remarkable thing to uh, kind of have a front row seat for as well. Uh, my my favorite thing. This is going to be so goofy because this is this is one of these like really fun message board things that you know we were Tony and I were down in New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl, and uh, we went out to dinner. Nevada Nevada is uh, quite a, a quite a gourmet and has you know anytime you go to a city, it's like oh, ask Nevada where to go and he's going to steer you to the right place. And he recommended we go to the Pelican Club and we looked at the menu and went like, uh, that's that's a little that's a little stiff. That's a little more than we typically spend. Doesn't have a drive through on the side. I'm not sure we can bring Tony there. <laughs> and uh, 
Kirk's like, I'll Venmo ven- ven- you some money. You guys have to go, but you have to write about it on the board. So we went to, so I took Tony to a, uh, you know, a very fancy, uh, you know, a very fancy place, multi, you know, I think it was a four course dinner and they had a very fancy menu for the, the season between Christmas and New Year's. I forget what the French word is for it, but they had a, a very special menu for that. And we went down there with uh, our buddy, Matt, who's a Clemson reporter and had this very nice dinner. And then we wrote about it on the board. And it was like one of the most popular things we've done all year. It was just this like goofy, you know, we're kind of goofing on Tony a little bit. And he, you know, he, t- Tony's in on the joke. So he's, uh, he's, you know, talking about how he wants ketchup on his steak and all that kind of stuff. And, and, uh, but it just, it turned into this like incredibly popular, funny message board thread that like every once in a while it'll still pop up. And it was just like, it was just this very fun, like, nothing to do with anything. Like we just went and had dinner and that turned into this like really fun conversation where it just, you know, you and your buddy sitting around busting on each other a little bit. And uh, it was just, it was like a really fun moment with that community. Like we, we talk all the time about how fun that board is. Like that is a really fun board. That was one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite moments from year one. Um, and, you know, it's crazy though, how much we couldn't actually do during that first year. I mean, Bill and I, Bill has been on the morning scoop, I don't know, 30 times in the last year, 40 times. He and I just met in person for literally the first time this week because we have not been able to go to camps until very recently. I just met Mick Walker for the first time this week in person. The good news now is that it's now all going to be new and exciting this year because we can all do all this stuff. We just we just did, you know, got a chance to see what our team actually looks like when we're all working together in an event like that. So, Bill, like, I guess let people know, first of all, what, you know, if they're not a member, what do you get when you when you have the Buckeye Scoop team like we didn't even have the full team. We're, we're kind of still sort of figuring some stuff out. But like, what do you get when you have all of us covering a camp together? Like, what, is, what does that look like? And how much uh, how much fun could that be this year? Yeah, um, you know, we have more manpower than most sites have. And it's not their fault. You know, a lot of these people are part of networks and networks don't allocate more than two people, three people you know, at most, you know, and we have an army, we have nine guys and everybody works and everybody contributes. So, you know, at a camp when Mark is there and Mick is there and you're there and I'm there and we've got Alex and Tony and Nevada back on the board monitoring things and Kirk following things. I mean, that's an army and nobody else has. And, um, you know, we not only have quantity of people, we got a lot of quality of people too. So, I think that first Ohio State camp, I think people could really see what we can do. And I think if you look at, you know, views and responses from the other site and look at what we had, it was pretty clear that, you know, we had the most activity and we should have the most activity. And if we don't have the most activity, you know, somebody needs reprimanded around here. So and and we really talked about afterwards, what did we do well? What can we do better? And I think next week you're going to have that Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, two day extravaganza. And I think people are going to see better next week and I'm expecting us to be better next week. So kind of throwing the gauntlet down, not to, you know, anyone other than our staff that, you know, we do expect to be better next week. We have some really good ideas that we didn't use yesterday that we have coming. So, I mean, the staff with the amount of people we have and the quality of people we have, I mean, we can do so much um, on camp days, you know, that that hasn't been done in the past. So I think people need to, if they liked what they saw, you know, yesterday, stay tuned because we got more coming. All right, Mark. So what is next? We redid the website about six months ago. We've added several new staff members since launching. So what, what is coming up now in year two for the site? We do have some tech stuff we're looking into. It- you know, I don't want to promise it, you know, in the next three months, but in the next six to 12 months, I think is probably possible. So I look for us to continue to kind of build on our uh, foundation there on the website. Um, we want to do a lot more in-person type, you know, one-on-one stuff with guys, you know, recruiting type stuff. Uh, that's going to be much easier now. Uh, we, you saw a little bit of that, um, you know, two or three weeks ago, I was down in, you know, Florida, Georgia. Uh, we got some good one-on-one stuff, some video, some you know exclusive video, um, guys working out, guys practicing, uh, spring game stuff. Um, so we're going to continue to to hammer that home, I think. Um, and again, it's going to be a lot easier for us to to travel. Um, I think it's going to be a lot easier for us to you know people. Some school, every school is a little different in terms of how they handle the past year with with visitors and things like that. And 
Um, so, you know, we're going to be able to get in front of guys more and, and kind of get that exclusive kind of one-on-one stuff versus, you know, the, the whole, you know, press conference scrum that everyone can, you know, post on their site or whatever. So I think that's really a big key for us, but, you know, I just love the, the way our community has continued to develop. And that's nothing that even our, you know, our staff, we can, we can help with that. We know everyone's there for Ohio state information because they love the Buckeyes and, you know, that's our job to kind of make sure we continue to feed that and give them what they want. But what, what I, what I would say is even if you're just a a casual fan, it's still worth it to get on the site. You can go, there isn't a country in the world. You can fly to any country in the world. And if you post that on our message board, someone is going to give you things to do, <laughs> hotels to stay at, restaurants to eat at, how, what, what to do and what not to do. It's going to save you a ton of money. It's going to save you a ton of time and hassle. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's really, it's like, a, you know, I don't want to, you know, not include anyone, but it's like a, it's like a, almost like a gentleman's you know, association or something and, and ladies. And you can all, you know, like I said, if you want to talk about craft beer, if you want to talk about barbecue, if you want to talk about bourbon, if you, again, if you need travel advice, it, it's really, uh, it's really like a social club as much as it is, um, you know, a, an Ohio state site. So we want to kind of keep that going. Uh, that's, that's one thing I want to keep going is, is having people be able to go on there with any question they want and, and have it, you know, have people who have experience in that, um, be able to help them and, People have been connected and they've gotten jobs through our website. <laughs> like, you know, they work in a certain line of work and we have, you know, three people that own a business in that line of work that, that it might be hiring. I mean, there are so many resources on the board. I want to continue to grow that and keep people connected and, you know, you know, not just fighting about Ohio State football all the time and who should be starting at running back or whatever, but, you know, keep the other stuff going too, where, you know, everyone's kind of helping each other and people are able to, to really gain a real value from the board beyond just Ohio state information. And that community is going to may go net this year now from a purely virtual community to, we might actually get to do some stuff in person this year. We might be able to get together and, you know, I, I understand bill, you may play some golf from time to time. So maybe bill can do something with golf, uh, you know, tailgates, that kind of stuff like that. That's all stuff that has sort of been discussed and like, that's a thing you can do again now. Like, so that, that should, uh, that should be a lot of fun this year as we, you know, can, obviously it is a fun and vibrant and growing community, but also we can, we can actually see people in person now. And let me tell you, having now seen some people in person, it is a delight. I've missed doing that. Let's do some more of that, please. Uh, Mark, Mm -hmm. go ahead and put on the sales pitch. Today is uh, our first birthday. It is also a deadline in terms of signing up for membership to uh, get some special perks. If you're a first year member, uh, we have Nevada giving away some tickets in about about a month. Uh, get, go ahead, put on the sales pitch for BuckeyeScoop.com. Yeah, I feel like I just did part of it there with the community. <laughs> you know, again, we're going to give you great Ohio State information. We're going to listen to you on on what you want, what you you know, kind of how you want the information displayed to you. You know, people, some people want video, some people want podcasts, some people want you know the the blogs and the articles. We're going to give you all that, so it's going to be something for everyone. You're going to get you know again. If you're going to Germany next winter, <laughs> you're going to get a 20 people who have been to Germany and are going to give you some incredible insight, you know, or wherever you're traveling. It's it, you're going to get all that. You're going to get a hardworking staff. We got, like I said, we got nine, 10 people right now. Uh, we're going to continue to explore new ways uh, to kind of, uh, you know, continue to feed the beast on that stuff. We're, we're even looking, you know, hey, we we may still be hiring, just so you know. <laughs> so uh, we're not we're not slowing down on on talent acquisition. Um, and then you get, you know, the beat Michigan pants. We got, we got a little gold pants icon. Uh, you get on your profile. If you, if you subscribe, uh, by, uh, the end of the day on, on June four. So that's still up there. Um, Nevada bucks giving away, he's doing a raffle. I believe, I believe that's July four. Um, uh, if you're signed up, you get into the raffle, um, for four tickets to the Oregon game for free, uh, for free of charge. Um, and then I believe you get more raffle tickets if you, if you refer someone. So if you're an ex- existing customer, you can you can get a referral here and get someone out, get a buddy on board, and you get another entry into the raffle. And um, you know, fr- from a personal standpoint, I got Blue Jackets tickets finally that I think I'll be able to give away this this winter. Um, I, I'm always happy to to donate some Blue Jackets tickets to to the cause uh, for our members. So if you're a hockey fan. Uh, uh, fans are gonna be back in the seats in some capacity th- this winter, and we're gonna we're gonna have some giveaways on that front too. So we're gonna, we're always gonna be finding new ways to kind of um, enhance the value of your subscription. And Marcus, not kidding, 
I, I mentioned at one point on the board, you know, hey, my son's birthday is coming up. Does anyone know, you know, what the ticket protocols are for the Blue Jackets? Because they're playing on his birthday and he's a hockey player and he would like to go. And Mark got my son Blue Jackets tickets. So, yes, Mark does have Blue Jackets tickets. He will give them to you every once in a while. You don't even have to ask nicely. That's the kind of guy Mark is. And uh, that's the kind of site that Buckeye Scoop is. It is a lot of fun. It is a fantastic community. It is just it has been awesome to be part of. And uh, when you're down and I don't know, 50, 60, 70, we got we got a bunch more to go. There's there is a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of uh, exciting stuff coming as the world opens back up and uh, we can start doing the stuff that we've been hoping we could do for a year. It's been a fun year with all of the difficult stuff that's been going on. Now that life is getting a little easier, we're uh, taking the uh, donut off the bat and all of a sudden it's getting a little, it's a, oh, wow, this is easy. This is nice and light and fun to swing. So that is uh, that is where we are right now and uh, heading into a fantastic year. So you should consider becoming a member of BuckeyeScoop.com. Mark, Mark just told you why. I don't need to tell you. You should also check out all of our great podcasts. They're on all the podcast platforms. You know, just search Buckeye Scoop to find all of them. You can subscribe right there and leave us a five-star rating and review, which help other folks find those shows as well. And finally, youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. We've got another another week of camp stuff coming up next week. You're going to be able to find a ton of videos, interviews, highlights. It'll all be there, youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. All you have to do is hit subscribe, and then you'll get notified every time we post a new, co- a new, piece, a new piece of video, a new interview, new highlights, new whatever, new analysis of uh, people standing there talking about what they saw, like however you want your information. We'll give it to you however you want it. That's all at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. You just need to subscribe. That'll do it for today. Make sure you sign up today because otherwise you will miss out on some of those first year perks. So that's BuckeyeScoop.com. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful weekend. We will talk to you on Monday.